Welcome to World Class Sunday School. Again, uh, it's just a pleasure to have you join us as we continue to read and study God's Word. We're going to go in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day, this time that you allow us to share in your Word. We give you praise, glory, and honor. We, we pray that our hearts and minds are focused on what we are about to read and study. Pray that we have a desire to do those things we learn so that we can be better servants for you. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks and praise as always. Well, today uh, we are beginning our fall quarter. And this quarter we, is entitled God's Law is Love. God's Law is Love. Unit one is entitled, Love Completes, Law Falls Short. And today's lesson is entitled, Jesus Confronts Hypocrisy. Our lesson is coming from Luke, the 11th chapter, verses 37 through verse 44. We have two outlines that's going to guide us today. The first outline is two people. Luke the 11th chapter verses 37 through 41. And the second outline is three woes. Luke the 11th chapter verses 42 through 44. So we have two people and three woes that we're going to look at today. Uh, the first two lessons in this uh, new unit in unit here in unit one is coming from the gospel of Luke who Paul referred to as the beloved physician. Dr. Luke, a Gentile and traveling companion of Paul, he was with Paul uh, the apostle even during his imprisonment later in life according to 2 Timothy 4 and 11. Luke was also the writer of the Acts of the Apostles. His theme is Jesus as Savior. As a Gentile writer to a Greek audience, he often used Greek terms rather than Hebrew terms, strongly emphasizing the gospel is for the entire world. During this uh, time in scripture, where our lesson is today, Jesus was uh, going about his ministry, preaching, teaching, and healing. And he, calling, he was calling out the, the wickedness of the people and pointing out the importance of their e internal spiritual transformation. The Pharisees were a small but influential sect. They focused on strict alliance to Judaism. They were, they were really deeply involved in obedience of the law. The Pharisees believed that faithfully obeying even the smallest part of the law, they would experience blessings from God. They had established a tradition to guide their behavior. They sought to build a, a fence around the law of Moses by enforcing their own rules. And that's, that's, you get in trouble, they, they got in trouble uh, putting in their own rules. The Pharisee zeal, however, had caused them to lose sight on the intentions of the law and the extent to which they had been influenced by tradition. Despite their relationship, we're going to see that one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to dinner. They, they had become proud and arrogant and as a result they had been hostility and animosity toward Jesus. Uh, and so he, in our first outline, we're going to look at two people. Jesus. 
Jesus and a Pharisee. In, in verse 37. I'm going to read verse 37 and, and 38. Thir verse 37 says, And it has, as he spake, a certain Pharisee besought him to dine with him. And he went in and sat down to meet. And when the Pharisee saw it, he marveled that he had not first washed before dinner. And this was, this was a ceremonial wash. The Pharisees cleanliness in general and hand washing in particular was ways to follow the religious tradition. Okay, it says, as he spake. Now, in, in the verses preceding verse 37, Jesus was teaching the crowd regarding, regarding their wickedness and how they might live a righteous life. And then uh, it said in verse 38, and when the Pharisees saw that Jesus did not wash, wash his hands before me, before the meal, nothing in the law commanded such washing. The Pharisees were concerned about ceremonies, not hygiene. In Isaiah, he, he refers to hypocrites and spiritual phonies. He says, man's tradition can be taught and followed without a pure heart. That's in Isaiah 29 and 3. Jesus said in Mark 7 and 8, you leave the commandments of God and hold to the tradition of man. And, and Jesus was, was teaching that the religious sect, they would, he said, said you, you honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. And God's, God's uh, law of love each, each believer should have a heart of love, and that's what this lesson really is trying to, trying to help us understand today. That tradition, uh, when you do things just for the sake of tradition and not do it in love, then it, it really as Christian we are out of order because when you read in 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, we find out there that, that whatever we do, if it's not done in love, then it's, it's worthless. And so here in verse 39, we, it, here it talks about inside and outside. In it, uh, verse 39 and, through, and 40, let me read those verses. Verse 39 said, And the Lord said unto him, now do ye Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but your inward part is full of raveling and, and wickedness. Verse 40 says, Ye fools, did not he that make that which is without make that which is within also? Now here Jesus uh, is rebuking the Pharisees and those that are following the teaching of the Pharisee, he's rebuking uh, their motives for, uh, and their actions. Jesus, uh, he, he's not a, a here talking about the inside and outside. And he uses, here he uses an optic illustration or lesson. He used a cup and a platter to show the condition of their heart. Now, and he didn't condemn them for being clean on the outside, but he condemned them for, that, now that was the ex, the, the outside show. And they were doing everything right according to the law. He wasn't condemning them for that. That was their, their acts or their, their outside show. He was condemning them because their hearts were defiled. And that was the inside. 
And then, and then he says, ye fools, did not he that make that which is without make that which is within? Now, now Jesus uh, referred to them as being fools, and this was not just a, a name calling. Because they ref he called them fools because they refused to understand the truth. Now, it's one thing to do wrong, but when you do wrong and know you're wrong, and then you have your a mindset not to not to get it right, you you become a fool, and that's why Jesus was calling them fools because they understood the truth, they knew the truth, but they made no attempt at all to repent and get it right because they they would just sit in their ways and they were, they were arrogant and they just refused to do what was right in the, in the sight of God. And he goes on to say, he said, did not he that make it that which was without make that which was within also? And look, God made us. He knows all about us. God knows what's in our hearts. And that's, that's what he was referring to here. He knows our hearts. And we, we can't fool God with, with putting on a show or misrepresenting a really claiming to be one thing when we are really something else. And that's, that's what a hypocrite is. One who pretends to be something that they are not. Scribes and the Pharisees who were the, the religious leaders were pretending to be all righteous and holy when, when they were really defiled because of their wicked hearts. You know, the Bible, the Bible tells us that only the pure in heart will see God. And so we need to, we need to search our hearts and make sure that, that our hearts are pure, that our motives are righteous, that we do things out of love. When we do that, then, then we'll be in good standing with God. But anything we do outside of love it's worthless. It won't don't amount to anything. Okay, God warns people to live lives that are pure from the inside out, not con concerned only with the appearance. And God wants us to live a life of integrity. And you know, integrity is is who you really are. Uh, when you when you do when you act in love. When you are uh, among a crowd or when you are uh, alone by yourself, a righteous life of integrity, that's, that's what we should be striving for. Then it goes on to talk about generosity and cleanliness in verse 41. It said, but rather give alms of such things as ye have, and behold, all things are clean unto you. And really, uh, God was, was calling them out because they were giving alms for show. They, n n heart, their heart just wasn't, wasn't in it. And they weren't doing it because of love. They were, they were doing it to make themselves look good. This is, this is something that, that we really need to be mindful of. <laughs> My mind went back to when I was uh, treasured at, at, at my church for, for a while, and uh, people would, would come by and put envelopes in the basket. And it would, it would just blow your mind, because sometimes those envelopes wouldn't have anything in them, or people would just put, put me in just to, for show. To let make other people think that they were tithing and and uh, offering, but they, if you put if you pass by the basket and put an envelope in there with nothing in it, that that's for sure. That's that's what you're doing. You, you don't you're not. They weren't giving alms because uh, their concern or love for for their fellow man. They was given on because they wanted to be seen of men. 
And when you do, the Bible, the Bible teaches us that when we do things for a pat on the back, when we get our pat, then that's the only reward we get. But we, we as Christians should be striving to, to be pleasing in the sight of God. And our reward comes when we, when we show love to our fellow man. And that's, that's what God honors. And he's not pleased with when we put on a show to be recognized by, by men. And that's sometimes we, we find ourselves doing that and it's not pleasing in, in God's sight. But God, God wants us to, to, to give alms. And alms, alms really was an expression of a faithful, loving heart. That's, that's what it was in, that's intended for. But, but they were using it for, for other purposes. Okay, so here in this first portion of our lesson, uh, we see the two people, Jesus who was teaching and preaching righteousness and the scribes and the Pharisees who were teaching uh, tradition. And they, they had no uh, love in their heart for, for their fellow man and they were, they were using the law as, as though the law would make them righteous, uh, uh, purify them. But God's law really intended to show where we, where we stand as, as, as re, is regarded to sin. And, the, and like the, the scripture says, the, the law uh, falls short. The law had no power uh, to, to save, but love is complete. And when, when, we, when we are uh, really genuine Christians, then we're gonna have love and compassion in our hearts for, for God and for one another. And we're gonna see that as we go on in our lesson, but we wanna uh, here bring out the point that, that these religious leaders and God was calling them out because of their uh, hypocrisy. They were, they were pretending to, to be righteous in their association with one another when actually they didn't really care for one another. And they didn't care for the truth uh, that, that Jesus was teaching. They're, they're, they confessed to be righteous, but Jesus is showing us that their hearts were far from him. So we want to make sure that we are not just going through the motion, that we're not just going to church and we're not just uh, quoting Bible scriptures and, and doing all those things without the love in our hearts that, that we have when God's Holy Spirit indwells us. We want to make sure that we have a heart of love and, and God's word tells us that, that we, we know that uh, the love in our hearts for one another is a sign that we've been brought from death to life. And if, you, if we don't have that love in our heart, that means that we haven't been brought from death to life. And so we want to make sure that we are not just going through the motion. So when that time comes, when Jesus comes back for his church, we want to know for sure that we're going to be a part of, of the rapture. That, and and when we have love in our hearts for one another, then that's, that's a sign or that's, that's proof that, that we're not hypocrites, that we're not phony Christians, but we are, we are true uh, followers of Jesus Christ. And we know that, that Jesus Christ, uh, as Luke was conveying, that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. Okay, let's look at the, our, our set, the second portion of our lesson. And we, here we're going to see three woes. Now, woe 
is a stern warning that Jesus was giving those religious leaders now. And, and we know that, that, that uh, a warning comes before destruction. And so when, when we are warned of something, beware and, and woe to us. And, and so Jesus wanted them to, to make sure that they understand what, what, he's, what he's saying. A woe is a warning, and a warning comes before destruction. And, and here we, we're going to look at these woes in uh, Luke, the 11th chapter, verses 42 through verse uh, 44. Okay, the first woe is against injustice. It says, but woe to you Pharisees, for ye tithe mint and rue and all manners of herbs, and pass up judgment and the love of God. These ought ye have done, and not leave the other undone. Okay, and so, so what we have here, the injustice. It says, uh, doing the small insignificant things, they put, they put emphasis on tithing mint and root. Those, those are small insignificant things. And, and uh, they, were, they were tied down to, to the, the, the smallest thing. But they were passing over judgment and the love of God, which was the major thing. And, he, and then uh, Jesus said, these all ye have done. That, that's tithing. Tithing is, is part, is uh, something that we should do. But we shouldn't tithe and then leave off the important thing, which, which is love. Uh, uh, omitting the, the most important thing. And did they, did they really know? They knew because Deuteronomy 6 and 5 tells us that we should love the Lord God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our strength. So they knew. Because they, they were students of God's word. But do, do we know the, the important thing? Yes, we know because Matthew 22, verse 37 through 39, uh, when Jesus was asked what is the greatest commandment, he said to love God with all your soul and to, and to love your neighbor as yourself. He said, on these two commandments, he ends all the prophets and the law. So, so we know because the word of God teaches us. Okay, the second woe is against pride. Oh, man, we talked about pride many times. And he said, woe to you Pharisees, for you love the uppermost seats in the synagogue and greetings in the markets. And so what they would do, they would, they would present themselves in the marketplace with their robes and their bells and whistles so that they could be recognized uh, as being more important than they really, they really were. And, and taking uh, the highest seat in the synagogue so that they were really lifting themselves up in pride. Luke 14, 11 says, everyone who exalts himself will be humble, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Proverbs 25, verses 6 and 7 tells us that in life, self-seeking and pride uh, brings one down. Don't enter such a place. The elevation of the humble is honorable, but the humbling of the proud is d disgraceful. So, so don't put uh, don't put yourself on a pillar. If you if you, if God exalts you, if if you are humble, then God will exalt you. But if you uh, humble yourself, I mean, if you uh, lift yourself up in prayer, then God is going to humble you. And the third woe here in our lesson is against deadly influence. And that's what the uh, Pharisees were. 
And here we see in verse 44, it says, War unto you, and Jesus here includes scribes, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are as graves which appear not, and the men that walk over them are not aware of them. And they were full of, of covetousness, envy, and malice, yet they concealed it as so awful that they, they weren't recognized as being deceitful and wicked. Those who followed their teachings were defiled and infected with their corruption and they suspected nothing. So that's why it's so important that we as Christians read and study God's word for ourselves so that we won't be misled and we won't stray away from the word of God and, and uphold tradition uh, as though it's God's word. That's, that's the warning that we see here. And God uh, is allowing us to, to see, to check our, examine our hearts and make sure that, that we are not doing the less important things and leaving out the most important thing, which is love. Lord, we thank you for this time. Thank you for just revealing to us the truth. And we have a heart to believe and, and want to uh, learn the truth and do what's right and pleasing in your sight. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks and praises always. Well, friends, again, we thank you for joining us on today, and we look forward to having you in our next session. So until then, may God richly bless and keep you is our prayer.